Hey now, welcome to the Witcher Math channel. I've done a lot of videos in the past about uh, percentages and price increases and decreases and sale prices and things like that. But one type of problem that often gets off overlooked is taxes and tips, and more specifically, what's the price before a tax or a tip was added to something? Okay, this is a tricky kind of question and it uh, throws a lot of people off. Let's see if it throws you off. Go ahead and pause the video, take a moment and just answer this question very quickly. Use any method you want to. And when you come back, I'll explain the most common wrong answer and then I'll show you the right way to do it. Okay, see you in a few. Welcome back. Hope that was uh, fun for you. You took your time and were careful about it. By the way, here we're talking about a common core standard um, regarding ratios and proportions, these types of things, interest, taxes, tips, markups and markdowns, things like that. Okay, so that's the standard we're working from. First, I'm going to ask you this question. Was this your answer? Did you get $149.04? No! No! I hope not. But the good news is, if you got that answer, we're going to fix it, and that will not happen to you again. Okay, that was a wrong answer. And here's possibly how you might have been thinking to get that answer. You might have been thinking, oh, 8%. So if I find 8%, of 162, which is uh, $12.96. And then if I take that away from 162, that would give me the price before taxes, right? That's one way you could think about that. Wrong. Another way you could think about that is, hey, what is, uh, what's 92% of 162? Right, that's kind of the same way but instead of doing a subtraction problem, we're actually doing the subtraction right there. And of course, your answer there would be 149.04. Also, not right, okay? That's kind of understandable, but let's attack it with a little bit of common sense here. A little critical thinking, not trying to insult you if you got it wrong. I just want to get you to understand why that's wrong. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to Try to fit this into a proportion. <clears throat> okay, now first of all, anytime we have a percent problem, the fraction bar, think of that as the word per, and cent means 100. Okay, so that always goes on the bottom. And in this case, the 100 represents the price of the room before the tax was added. 100% of the room price. Does that make sense? Okay, now over here, I'm going to put the X. You know why? Because that's the question here. What was the price before the tax? So since 100% is the price of the room before the tax from a percentage standpoint, this is also the price. This is the room before the tax. As you know, the key with any proportion is setting it up the right way. The math is usually pretty simple. So the question here is, what goes on top of the 100? Well, if 100 represents the room, 8 is the tax. So it's greater than the price of the room, right? 100% plus 8% in addition to. So this number 162 that the problem gave us, that is actually the room plus the tax, right? Includes the tax. So there's our proper way to set this up. See how different that is from getting the 92 or the 8% off up here? Okay. It's a lot different. And here's how we do this. We're just going to cross multiply and solve it. I'm going to divide both sides by 108. <clears throat> and we get the price of the room was 
Okay, now we can attack this the other way. We can kind of work forward from, okay, let's say if we want to check your work, you have a $150 room. If we uh, go to add 8% to it, what that really means is we're going to multiply it by 1. So 1 represents the price of the room and 8%, right? So if I take the room and 8%, that should give me what I started with up here. That should give me the 162. And of course, it does. This was carefully planned out. There we go. So the difference, although from a dollar standpoint, not a lot of difference between the right answer and the wrong answer, but if you're taking one of those multiple choice tests, which we all love so much, and your first choice was 149.04, and you picked that, oh, that's going to leave a mark, okay? So always apply critical thinking. I'm going to give you a chance to do that right now with another sample problem, the same type of problem. Though. Ready? Good. Here we go. Hank the Tank, he just spent $69 at his favorite restaurant, which includes the tip of 15%. How much was the bill before the tip was added? Go ahead and pause it, work this out, and see if you can apply critical thinking here and do this one the right way. See you in a few minutes. All right, welcome back. I'm just shuffling a few papers around here. Yeah, that's the sound of papers shuffling around. There's, there's the papers. Okay, so let's figure this one out. This time I'm going to do it the right way first, but then I'm going to add in red what's the wrong way. Now keep in mind, I'm very aware there's lots of different strategies for figuring this out. I'm just trying to stick to this one strategy because it's connected to uh, other things I've taught in the past. Okay, so we want, uh, there's our percent, right? This $69 is the price, this is the check. <laughs> our question is asking how much was the check before the tip, right? before the tip. So this also is the check before the tip. So we've got them all lined up correctly. When I add 15% to the check, I'm talking about 115%, right? I'm paying more than the bill was. And that's what the $69 is in this problem. So just understanding that from a critical thinking standpoint, is key to this one. Now it's super easy. The math is super easy. Remember, this is the check plus the bill, just like this is over here. I'm going to make sure all this stuff matches. We have our dollars over here and our percent over here. And we cross multiply, 115x. 69 times 100 is 6,900. We're going to divide by 115, and we get, I'm just going to double check here. It's always okay to double check, especially when you're making a video and you want it to be right the first time. So according to this, our bill was $60 before the tip was added. If we want to check our work, we could simply say, okay, I just paid $60 for food and drinks, and I'm going to add 15%, which means I'm going to multiply this by 1. 1 represents the check. And 15%. If you get in the habit of saying the word and, instead of point, <laughs> you'll just be a much better person. <laughs> there we go. The word and. 
Yeah. And when you multiply 60 by 1 and 15%, or 15 hundredths, we get $69, and that checks out. Now, here's a common mistake people make, if you want to hang in there till the end here, especially if you did not get $60. If you got $58.65, you are the victim of the common mistake on these problems, okay? Which is, you would have said, oh, I'm going to take 15% of $69, which is $10.35, and then subtract it. You get 58.65. Kind of seems like it's all right, but it's not. It's not. Because if you do this, then what you're really saying is 69 was only 85% of the check. Okay? The bell's ringing. I'm going to have to get rolling here. So there's your mistake. There's the right answer, $60. And thanks for watching so much. Thank you so much, and uh, stay tuned for more videos. Leave a comment if you have an idea for my next video.